Hi, this is John again. This is my Lab 14, the last one for the basic kit for the uh, TIRSLK, the Robot System Learning Kit, or the Robotic System Learning Kit. And uh, so in this one, they're using the, the nested vector interrupt uh, to control the bumper switches. Now, unfortunately, what I had done, I had set the bumper switches onto port 9, actually port 8. Um, in the top up here because of the something else I'm going to do later on but the wires wouldn't fit to port fours where in the lab that's how they have it set so what I did I put some switches out here on this breadboard to mimic that without having to change my configuration um, from what I have have it configured to something else um, I already have it set up to where these are using the timer you, they can respond with that. It seems to work out better, especially when you have two switches that are hit at the same time uh, versus just one. And uh, so that's just what I did. So out here, I just have the breadboard set to where I have the pumper have these switches out here um, on the on the breadboard and and just simulate the the functionality. So um, what we end up having to do in here, is you had a multiple files you had to end up editing. And yet they have a new bump int um, instead of the, the the other bumper file that we that was configured previously. So I just set this up for port four, and then uh, the way they had it set was for the uh, not there for the bumper switches for zero. And then they skipped uh, I guess one, and they went to two. They're actually going to use one for uh, the sharp IR sensors kind of odd how they mixed it up but we'll go with that so I just go ahead and go with the flow with this one and then set it up for for that so it end up being ED the way uh, I guess the way it li lined up and then uh, set up for the nested interrupt uh, this for port 4 it should lands in uh, in 9 and uh, the interrupt is actually 30, uh, 38 in the table and then minus 32 gives you a 6, so uh, put the bit location 6 here. And uh, there's four options within this IP4. So this uh, port 4 landed 3, so that's why I ended up here, or actually where that 40 is. Um, so that's how that ended up. And then set this up with uh, rising edge, and I clear the flag, and then I arm the the interrupt from here and then uh, also with this so when this kicks off it actually this function here gets passed in with the function pointer and then uh, you end up passing a value to it so it gets the collision data is collected um, that also had to be transformed from uh, the interrupt value into uh, the value that you want so I just have it to where it's actually just responding to the bumper switches by by value um, and then, uh, so we go through and then I, well, I have multiple mains. Uh, so we'll go ahead and look at this thing. So if I go ahead and turn this on, let me get this up here. So it should be able to push a button. It will, I had to push a button for it to activate because it's sitting in a, ready state and uh, so the, the LED should blink on this particular one while it's rolling but if I hit a bumper switch it should go backwards then turn and then go forward uh, I think they just had it to where it stopped but that didn't seem to be that exciting because then I have to reset it every time I did something so I hit another switch over here so if I hit one of these switches on this side so this is the left so it should go back and then turn right and then go forward. Or if I hit one of these, it should go back, turn left, and then go forward. So the problem is when you hit two of them, it was basically the first one that came out of the chute. And that's basically how it got represented. So it's pretty responsive. Um, seemed to work out pretty good. Um, I have to see if I can set that up uh, for that and then um, 
we'll see what happens from later on. But that's uh, pretty much what you do with this lab. You set it up and then uh, it began with the bumper switches and this rolling along. Still no IR sensor, which is what I was hoping for, um, which would have made more sense to me. Let me go ahead and turn this off. Um, because this is the last lab for the basic uh, kit, um, so I would suspect you'd have some sort of line following or something like that, but I guess they expect you to do that on your own. It wasn't part of the lab. Uh, I think there was some suggestion to put in this and have it test out the bumper switches. It could, I could do that. Um, but uh, there was only one instance where we played early on in the early labs where we were playing with the IR sensors. Uh, but it would have been nice to have a final end of this thing, maybe doing both with the IR sensor and the bumper switches. Um, because that's basically what you would get with the basic kit. Um, so the next part I'm doing, I have the add-on kit, the, the extra kit that came with that to make it basically into an advanced kit, the upgrade kit, I guess. So it's got a, the Wi-Fi, it's got the Bluetooth, it has the sharp IR sensors that are come on top of this thing, and then it has the encoders. Right now I'm not running with any encoders on the, on the motors, so it's basically just doing, you know, the two wires out of the motor into the motor controller board. And that's all I have. Um, and so that's pretty much it. And so that's it for all the, the basic kit labs. This is up to 14. And then uh, we'll see what happens with the next five, I guess. Um, and then going up to Wi-Fi. There you go.